Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at the bewildering variety of small Unitron Altaz mounts. This video got started because of something Tara Clark posted on Cloudy Nights, and I'll show you the pictures here and you can see what I'm talking about. This is a very unusual and strange mount. As you can see, the altitude and azimuth do not couple together, so you can have one moving independently from the other. Okay, let's start with the smallest one. This is a mount for a 40 millimeter. This is also very, very old. This is early 50s, and it's uh, very primitive in many respects. It's got some, uh, you know, it's got the traditional Unitron screws and and spring kind of an arrangement. Here is your altitude, and here's your altitude lock, and this is your altitude slow motion. Works fine. Everything is great. Here's your azimuth slow motion, but you don't have any way of adjusting the azimuth uh, for course adjustment. So if you have something that's in a different part of the sky, you have to move the whole telescope. I've illustrated this nicely in a uh, uh, video I've got that's called Classic 40 millimeter Telescopes. So check that out. Anyway, this is um, a bit of a pain, uh, but still not bad. And they evolved. This this thing evolved into this one with some uh, better attributes. This is a 40 millimeter also. This has got the cradle uh, rather than the saddle. So the cradle has the advantage of uh, being, you can slide the tube back and forth so you can, uh, it's a, a bit more flexible. This thing has now uh, the usual kind of a altitude lock. So you can move it in altitude, lock it down, that slow motion, but it also has azimuth. There's an azimuth lock there. You can move it around in azimuth, lock it down, and then you have azimuth slow motion. Much better, much, much, much better. <clears throat> so that's the 40 millimeter. Here's a 50 millimeter. Let's put them side by side so you can see. Uh, it looks like the the spring housings are about the same size, at least approximately. Uh, also, one of the things that you'll note about this is this has the plastic knobs, which in indicates a little bit later. Uh, with the metal knobs, that's an earlier one. But in many respects, this is these are identical. The 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter are pretty much, very, at least very similar. Um, and they have uh, about the same kind of construction. This is a little bit longer and so forth, but I believe from here on down, all this stuff is pretty much the same. Well, actually, now that I see it, look at this. This is a little bit bigger here than that. So it's there are some slight differences. Now, that's 50 millimeter. Now let's go to a 60 millimeter. And this is quite a fairly substantial leap in terms of the overall size, mass, um, the overall construction of the thing is much heavier. I think you can see, if I hold this up, I think you can see that the spring housing's a little bit larger. So you have bigger springs in there. They're certainly longer. Uh, you have bigger springs in there, larger diameter, uh, stronger springs, which you're going to need because you're going to have a slightly heavier mount here. So here is the, uh, and this I know is an early one, look at the knobs, that tells you right away that it's early. There's another dead giveaway here, and that is this. Check this out. When you move this around, the altitude and azimuth are not coupled. This is like Terra's mount, like the one that started this whole video. And it's um, very strange, very interesting. It's got an advantage. Over this, this one, you have to move the whole thing around, but it's also a little bit more primitive, as we'll see, than what came along later. So it does have a lock. Okay, you got a lock for um, azimuth. Move it around. <laughs> you can get the whole thing backwards. I guess it's still pretty usable that way, just not quite as uh, intuitive or obvious. Well, this did not last long. Um, late 50s, at the latest, probably mid 50s, and they went to something a bit more like this. This is 
another Unitron mount for a 60 millimeter scope, the 114. Uh, you can see, of course, it's got a change in the knobs, but much of the construction, the rest of the construction is similar, but look different. This is on the other side, and you got a whole different arrangement going on. Um, it is apparently these are not the same casting, so they kind of redesign things, at least many parts of it. The base is, I'm sure, the same casting, but this part here is uh, different. It has to be because of the different uh, location of where the, where the where the lock is. So now the lock is down here, down at the bottom, and now you can turn the whole thing all as one unit instead of having it be floating independent kind of a deal. This is a, a lot more convenient, I'll tell you, from personal use under the night sky. This is much more convenient, very nice, and you lock it down, you lock it down, and then you've got your slow motion so you can follow things. If you're looking at the moon, it's really nice to be able to look at the moon and tweak it a little bit here, tweak a little bit there, and, and you can um, move from one crater to the next, one feature to the next. So uh, that is that evolution. Now, let's take a look at this, and I don't know if the, obvious, the differences will be obvious, probably not. It's possible that the only substantial difference here is the size of the springs. This is a 140 mount, uh, maybe, I, maybe I shouldn't say that, I believe it's for the 140, and I think you can see, I think it's pretty obvious, I think you'll be able to see it on the screen, that the diameter of the spring housing is larger. This has bi bigger, stronger springs in it. So this is going to uh, hold up a little bit more weight. Uh, these shafts are also, this shaft is a little bit bigger than that one. Knobs are the same size, but the shaft is a bit bigger. So this is a, overall a little bit stronger mount. And it looks like the castings are pretty similar. I think maybe a lot of these castings are the same. These castings down here are the same. They beefed up the hardware a little bit. And uh, that may be the only difference between those. All right, I thought I'd show you some other very interesting Unitron mounts. They're all essentially uh, very, very similar. Uh, there are differences in terms of the size and overall mass of things, but this guy here, this is pretty rare. Um, it has a just a quarter inch 20 thread here, and you could have put a lot of things on their camera or uh, whatever. You could have obviously put on one of their Unitron spotting scopes, put it on there. Um, and the mount overall is not, not super robust. It's a fairly lightweight mount. This, came, this comes on legs, of course. Now let's compare that with this one, which is, uh, looks like very, pretty much the same thing, very, very similar. The weight of everything is about the same. This has the longer neck here for some reason, I'm not sure, but it's got the, this is a quarter inch 20 thing. So this is designed to clamp onto uh, one of the, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. this is designed to clamp onto a Unitron spotting scope. That clamp goes on there. You could also have used it for as you can see, you've got almost the same thing there now. And of course, you could have, uh, you could do this too. I don't know why not. So, uh, the difference being the color. So here you have this. This matches the Unitron spotting scopes, the 60, 70, 80 millimeter spotting scopes, like that. This is not to be confused with this one, which is actually, <laughs> Uh, maybe it should be confused because it's almost exactly the same thing. If you look at these from here on up, they're the same. As a matter of fact, this detaches here, and you can put this on a standard camera tripod. This has got quarter-inch 20 threads here. This came with their 80 millimeter spotter, and it's a nice, convenient tabletop mounting for the 80 millimeter spotter. Uh, this comes with a tripod, so this attaches to a tripod. Okay, let's compare these two mounts. This is definitely a mount for a 75mm scope. You can see how nice and beefy it is. It's counterbalanced. It's got a nice big weight here. And even this weight is just barely enough to, to help handle the mass of the telescope, which is over here and very long. 
so this is a nice big robust mount, nice big springs, nice big shafts here to push this, the heavy duty springs in there. This is a mount that was definitely more than adequate for a 60 millimeter scope. And I think on occasion, this was sold with the three inch telescopes, the 75 millimeter scopes as well. Uh, it's, uh, it leaves a 75 millimeter a little bit undermounted, probably get away with it, but sort of just barely kind of a deal. Um, I think this mount is much superior. And I think this mount also came along a lot later. Let's just put this up to, to this and compare. And you can see this is definitely, look how much bigger that is. That's true. That's going to have a lot stronger spring in it. And I've seen the springs from both of these there. This is definitely a big, robust, strong spring. Also a bit longer, I guess. These, uh, this is a bigger shaft here, bigger than that one. So this is a much more, uh, useful amount for a big 75, long 75 millimeter scope. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at small Unitron Altaz mounts. Thank you for watching.